Hey everyone, this series is going to teach you how to script on Roblox and in the first video I thought we'd look at something called properties. So any Roblox object has a list of properties which describes how it acts in the game, how it looks for example. And if you go to the view tab and click properties, then whenever you select something such as a part, you're going to see these list of properties. So we've got properties which change the colour of a part, we've got properties that change its transparency, we've got material properties, loads of different properties which change how this part looks and acts. Now these um, properties are very important in scripting because you can change them with a script and that's what scripting really is. It's just about changing properties at different times and then when you put together all of these changing properties you, ha you start to make your game interactive. And so let me show you how you can change these properties with a script. It's very simple. So if we go into the server script service, this is where we're going to put our scripts for this video. We're gonna insert a script, okay? This is a server script. We'll dive into the different types of scripts in another video. But the, what you need to know, I'm just gonna make my script a little bit bigger. What you need to know is that to firstly change a property, you need to tell the script uh, which object you want to change the properties of. So in this case, we want to change this part's property. So let's say we want to change its transparency, which basically tells us whether you can see through a part or not. Now we can obviously change this in the properties window, but what if we wanted to change it while the game is running through a script? Well, we can't just you know click it and change it because we aren't controlling the game. We have to do it through a script. So we have to tell the script which object we want to change a property of. And to do that, we reference it. And referencing is just telling the script where the object is in the game. So this part is inside of the workspace. The workspace is a service and it contains all of the parts and objects that we can see in the game, such as this part, this terrain, etc. So to reference this part, very simple. We just have to say game because the workspace service is in the game. What we're looking at in the Explorer is everything inside the game. So firstly, when we want to reference a service, we have to say game. So we say game, and then from there, we can uh, choose one of these services. Now we're choosing the workspace, and then we can choose any object that's inside this workspace, because you can see these three objects, the camera, terrain, and part, are all inside of the workspace. When we close the workspace service, you can see they get hidden and you can see that they're indented slightly, which shows that they're members of the workspace. So anything you can see in the game world that you can interact with and select, such as this part, is in the workspace. So we say game dot workspace and then dot each time when you want to reference a new object inside of the previous one. So we want to look inside the workspace and we want to get this part. So let's write out part, that's the name of it. There you go. And it showed up in the autocomplete menu. We now have our part. So now that we've got our part referenced, we've got access to the part, we can now uh, view all of these properties uh, if we click on dot. So if we press dot to insert a dot, you can see all of these uh, blue uh, icon things appear in this list, right? Don't worry about these ones, we'll get to them in a later video. So all of these blue icon things are called properties, things that we can change. So for example, let's choose one of them. We can view all of the properties available in this properties window. So let's choose one. So let's choose uh, transparency. Okay, so once we've uh, now got our property, we can change it just by saying equals, and then we can set it to a new number. Obviously, transparency is a number. It's between zero and one. Zero being opaque, you can't see through it, and one being totally transparent, you can see through it. So it's a number between zero and one, so any number in between will show a degree of transparency, okay? So if we just set this to one, then it's going to become transparent. Fully transparent, we'll be able to see through it. So we have just updated the transparency property of this part to be one. Now, this isn't going to run until we start the game because all server scripts 
like this one here, only start running when the game starts running. Now, this game is currently not running, but to run it, we can click on this little arrow uh, under the play button and click on run. We can press F8. And if you look at that, the part has disappeared. It's still in the game, but its transparency property has just been set to one. So that's because the script uh, ran as soon as the game began and instantly set the parts transparency to zero. But we've just manually gone and changed it back to zero through the properties tab. So that is a property. There are loads of properties in Roblox Studio. There are so many actually that we don't just change, trans uh, change properties by setting the property to a new number. For example, if we look at our name property, this describes the name of the part. So I could change this to be called brick, or I could call it Alvin blocks. You can call it whatever you want, but it has to be text, right? It has to be uh, letters and characters. You can also have numbers, but in scripting, we whenever we want to set the text of something, uh, such as name, we use something called a string. So let's just set the name property to be equal to something. We still use the equal sign, that just tells the script that we're updating the property to a new value. But this time we want to set it to some text. So if we wanted to call it my part, for example, well, this wouldn't work. We can't just say my part because the script gets confused here. It's thinking, well, I, I don't know what you mean by my part. It's unknown to me. I can't see it in the game anywhere. It probably thinks we're looking for an object called my part. But to get around this, we just put it in uh, speech marks like this. In, in these like quotes. So you can use speech marks or you can use the, these quotes or apostrophes. Now, you can see it's gone pink and that's because we have just defined a string and a string is, a, uh, is any characters of text. You can have numbers as well, but to be a string, it's within these speech marks and that just tells the script that we are inserting some text here and that it shouldn't get confused. This is just some text that we want to set our property to. So this is a string because it is some text, some characters, some letters, numbers wrapped inside these speech marks. So whenever you're setting a name or using some text as a property, you're gonna use those speech marks because it's a string. Let's just look at some other properties. For example, material. Now, if you wanted to update the material, what we would do is instead of saying, let's see, what materials have we got? We've got grass, for example. Instead of saying grass, all right, you could say it in speech marks like this, right? But for materials, it's best practice to use something called an enum, an enumeration like this. So you say enum, and then you do a dot, and then you do the name of the property, so material, and then another dot, and the game will actually, so the script will actually give you a list of materials to choose from and this is what an enum does it gives you a selectable list and this is just best practice whenever you're setting something such as a material which is a drop down so if you were to select pebble this would be your property so you're you're getting it from a list uh, and that's what an enum is it is a little bit confusing you may be wondering you know why why can't you just put it in speech marks but it's best practice to put it as an enum and an enum is just uh, it's just a list. It lets you choose from a predefined list and that is just best practice for Roblox scripting. If you run this script, you can see immediately, hold on, we have an error. Let's go to the output window and it says part is not a valid member of workspace. All right, so we're learning something already here. We've got an error. Now you're gonna encounter a lot of errors in your code and that's because sometimes you will have made a typo or you will have forgotten to change something. And whenever your script doesn't work, now we could tell it didn't work because the material didn't update. It's still marble, what we, we want it to be cobblestone. So what's gone wrong? Well, if we go to the output window by clicking view output, then the script will print out an error message and it says uh, server script. So in this server script one, line one here, you can see line one, Part is not a valid member of workspace. So it's saying, I looked in the workspace for a, uh, a brick called part and it's not there. And that's because we changed the name to Alvin Blocks. So let's change that to Alvin Blocks and run the game. And this time it should instantly update our parts property to 
cobblestone. Don't worry about these errors here. That's from a plugin that I've got that, that is malfunctioning at the moment. But there you go. That is how you uh, change properties in Roblox scripting. Very important. And also you've learned that there are different data types that we can set properties to. So not just numbers, but also strings. Whenever we want text, we wrap them in those speech marks. Materials, we use enums and also for properties such as anchored, archivable, can collide, for example. Uh, can collide is a property uh, which we'll learn about in the future. You can also set them to be Boolean values and a Boolean value is true or false. And that represents whether one of these boxes would be checked or unchecked. So false would be unchecked, true would be checked. We'll be looking at those properties in another video. But thanks for watching your first Roblox scripting tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like, drop me a comment with any uh, future videos you want to learn about. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications, of course. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.